What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make standalone executable files with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to show you how to create standalone files that will run on any computer with Kinter and Python. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, a lot of people have been asking me this lately, so I thought I'd do a quick video on how to make our Kinter apps standalone programs, you know, executable files, exe files, that you can share with your friends or have people download from a website, and they just work on your computer without having to install and run Python without having to go to the terminal and run Python and then the name of the file or whatever, just, you know, like a Windows file or a Mac file that you click on your desktop and the program just runs. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, and I'm going to show you the very, very easy way in this video. Now, it's not necessarily the best way. There are probably better ways to do this, and I'll probably talk about those better ways later. But as far as quick and easy goes, this is the way to do it. And you'll see why as this video goes on, it may not be the best way, but it's still a pretty good way. So we're going to use something called Pi Installer, and it's just at pyinstaller.org. You could go check it out if you're interested. You can read the manual if you want, all kinds of stuff in here. We really don't need to do any of that, though. Uh, we could just use this. So let's first, before we get started, we've been running our code in, let me pull up a terminal here, in our C slash GUI directory, right? That's where all of our Kinter files have been running since this playlist started last year, right? So I'm what I did before this video is I started another directory. So let me just show you here. Let me pull this over. And so I'm in my C GUI directory, and I created this folder called exe. It doesn't have to be called that. You can call it anything you want. You don't have to create a new folder. I just wanted to create a new folder to show you all of the stuff we're going to be doing and all the files are going to be creating in one spot so it doesn't sort of uh, get weird. Now, I also copied our icon, this little guy here, and I copied the code from last video we did on entry height, and that's just this stuff right here. If you remember, actually, let's just run this. So let's head back over here. We're in our C GUI directory. We need to change directory into exe, right? So now if we ls, we see basically here's this file and here's our icon. So if we run this, we go Python entry height, and if you remember from watching the last video, we just have this very basic program here. And you could sort of see the icon here, kind of hard to see, but it's there. And we, if we enter our name, John, we see it's a very big, we click the button, it says, hello, John, that's all this program does. Not much of a program, but we don't really care. Uh, we just need some simple program that we can turn into an executable file. So this is the program, that's our little icon. And I changed the code a bit. I went up here to where we designate our icon and I put it in the exe directory. That's the only change I made to this code. Otherwise, this is all the same from the last video. So, all right, now we wanna make this into an executable file. How do we do it? Well, we, we need to use pi installer, but we need to pip install that first. So we just come here and it's just pip install and it's pi installer, all one word. And it's going to collect and install a bunch of stuff here. And all right, that's done. Pretty easy. Now, in order to use this, we just type in pi installer.exe. And then dash dash, we want this to be one file, right? We want to designate an icon. So we want the icon to equal whatever we called this. So codemy.ico. So I can copy this. And let's just paste this in, right? And it'll look inside of this directory for this file, right? And then finally, we just wanna designate what file we want to add here. So we want this to be entry underscore height dot pi, which is just, pull this back up, what we named this file, entry underscore height dot pi, right? So that's all there is to it. One line, you designate, your, you call the exe to run it, you designate you want it as one file, you set your icon if you have one, right? 
Uh, you set the entry height, or you set the, the name of the file you want to turn into an executable, and then you just hit enter. Uh, but you want to spell pi installer correctly. So two L's. Doy. All right. So here it's doing a bunch of stuff. And this could take a minute or two. And we can see it's doing the stuff, doing the things. Okay, and now it's done. Now, if we clear this screen, if we ls now, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in this directory. So let's pull up this file explorer and start to look at all this stuff. So now we've got this PyCache folder, which has this thing. We have a build directory and an entry height directory. And inside of here, there's all kinds of weird stuff, right? We also have an entry height.spec file, and we have this dist folder. And if we look inside the dist folder, here's our actual exe file, right? So it's used our little icon. It's, it's called entry height.exe. Now you can call this anything you want. You can rename it if you want. Let's call it uh, my thing. Doesn't really matter. Now, if we run this, you see this box pops up. And this is why this may not be the best way to do it. Because when, when you run this, when anybody else runs this, if you put this exe file on your website and somebody downloads it and runs it, this will pop up every time. So, you know, maybe that's not the best thing. And then here we have our actual program. And if we toggle between, we can see there's the icon. You can see it easier that way. But now if we, you know, if we click, you know, whatever, hit the thing, it works. If we close that, it all disappears. So you now have a standalone file, right? A standalone program. And in fact, there's all this other stuff, but we can actually delete it all. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it, highlight it, delete it, got rid of all of it. Here's our disk thing. Maybe we want to cut this one out of here. And let's say we want to paste it in here, paste it somewhere else. And then we want to get rid of this folder too, right? So everything, all of that stuff is gone. Will this program here, the mything.exe, will it still work? Well, if we double click it, this thing pops up. A few seconds later, our program pops up and it still works. So we don't need all those other files, right? You can delete them all. You don't have to upload those to your website. People don't have to download those files, those directories, anything like that. This is just your standalone thing and it works. So like I said, strictly speaking, this is a pretty good solution to make an EXE file. I wouldn't call this professional because you still, you're running this little, looks like a command prompt thing, little terminal, fake terminal screen, which is then I guess spinning up your thing and running it like this. So it's kind of in my mind, a little bit of a hacky thing, right? Uh, if you're creating code that you're going to sell, if you're creating software that you're going to sell, this is probably not what you want your end user to see every time this weird little box, right? It might be confusing to them. You know, when I when I open up Microsoft Word, for instance, this box doesn't pop up, right? When I run the Chrome web browser, this weird little box doesn't pop up. So if you've got a program, you don't want this weird little box to prop to pop up, right? That's kind of weird. Uh, but as far as those things go, not a huge deal. And I haven't played around with this a lot because I haven't used this a lot because to my mind, that's not cool. But if you come down here and click on the manual, there may very well be a way to get rid of that box. There may be some flag that you can put when we wrote that one line of code to create the thing that minimizes that or something. I, I don't know. I haven't really gone through all this in great detail. So... Let's just look through here. I right, adding files to the bundle, giving runtime Python options. Maybe there. Here's a none or ignore. I don't know. I'm gonna have to play with this. Yeah, I don't know. But like I said, go through here and read it if you're interested. Uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff. Runtime information, right? So if you're interested, read through all that. But you know, it's just a Py installer. Uh, let's see, .org, and there's the docs here or down here at the bottom. Uh, so check that out. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, two thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codeby.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codeby.com, and we'll see you in the next video.